What is up guys, Blue Spooky here with another daily video. If you guys are enjoying these longer mega mixes and the regular daily videos, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Doing any of these helps to make sure the videos do well and that the channel does well, so I can continue making these videos for a long time to come. Uh, if you guys are curious about any censored words in the video, it's because I've been getting flagged for quote-unquote inappropriate language on pretty much all my new videos I put out, which is really affecting the channel. I'm doing my best to try and make sure that that's not happening, but if you guys would like to support the channel further than you already do, go ahead and click that join button somewhere around the subscribe button. It's only $2 a month at the lowest tier, and you get a special logo next to your name whenever you comment, as well as access to special emoticons. No content will ever be locked behind the paywall there. It's purely an optional thing you can choose to do if you'd like to support the channel any further than you already do. Without further ado though guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will let you guys get right into the true scary stories. I'll see you again at the end of the video. Not too long ago, I took the scariest hike of my entire life. It was only supposed to be a simple walk in the mountains, and a chance to escape. My friends and I had been planning this trip for weeks now, and despite the rain and the forecast, we were all very excited. We started on the trail at around noontime. The sky was overcast, but it wasn't too cold yet. The trail we chose was a well-trafficked path in the foothills, known for its beautiful views and relatively easy terrain. The plan was to go up a few miles, take a break at a scenic overlook, and head back before dark. We had been hiking for about an hour, when I decided to take a short break on a rock beside the trail. My friends continued ahead, planning to wait for me at the overlook. As I sat there, catching my breath and drinking some water, I heard something quite strange. It was a very soft rustling noise not too far away from me. I looked around expecting to see a deer or maybe a small animal of some sort, but instead I saw something far worse emerging from the bushes. About 100 feet away from me was a mountain lion. The mountain lion didn't seem to be observing me right away. It was just slowly moving along the trail its head hung low and sniffing at the air. I knew mountain lions were very dangerous and had read many stories of people seeing them and even being by them, but I never thought I'd encounter one myself. I slowly reached for my phone, trying to stay as quiet as possible. The mountain lion was inching closer, its gaze now fixated in my direction. I knew that shouting or running away would provoke it and likely trigger its chasing instincts, so all I could do was sit there frozen. I heard a loud noise from the trail below. It sounded like a group of people talking and laughing. It was a group of cyclists riding up the trail. They were a large group, probably a dozen or so, and were making quite a bit of noise. As they rode, the mountain lion seemed startled by their sound. It paused, looking in the direction of all that noise. I watched, barely able to breathe, as the mountain lion's attention shifted to the cyclists. The cyclists were getting closer, and as they did, they were shouting to each other and ringing their bells. The noise and commotion seemed to unsettle the lion. It turned around and looked back at me briefly. Then, as the cyclists approached closer, it bolted off into the underbrush. The cyclists, now riding past me, noticed me sitting on the rock. They slowed down, asking if I was okay. I nodded and told them what happened. They were all shocked, but relieved to hear I was unharmed. They said they had seen the lion on the trail, so that's why they started making all that noise. They wanted to scare it away, but hadn't realized it was so close to me. 
I quickly joined my friends at the Overlook and told them about the encounter. They assured me that it was quite rare to have an encounter like this, but it's always a good idea to be aware of your surroundings and make a lot of noise when hiking to avoid such encounters. As we made our way back to the trailhead, the reality of what really happened began to sink in. The only thing that saved me was the noise of those cyclists. If they hadn't been there, I probably wouldn't have made it out alive. I thought that if I ever saw a mountain lion, I wasn't supposed to make a lot of noise. If they hadn't shown up when they did, the situation would have been much worse. That moment on the hiking trail was by far the closest I had ever been to dying, and the image of the mountain lion art scares me enough to stay away from hiking now. This happened just a couple of years ago. I remember that I was with my girlfriend, and we were driving back home from a concert of some sort. It was pretty late at night, and the concert was about two hours away from where we lived. We did not, however, want to spend any money on a hotel, and knew that we could make the drive, even if it meant staying up really late. I remember that about halfway back, we stopped in a city to grab some gas. It was a city that neither of us had really been to before. After fueling my car, I started to drive back onto the road. We were going back onto the highway, but before doing so, we noticed this old Toys R Us. It was a crazy sight to see, because neither of us had been to a Toys R Us or even seen one since we were kids. I'm not sure when most of them went out of business, but I did know that there were only a few of them left around. When this story took place, my girlfriend asked me to pull into the parking lot to see if it was still in business. I'm a pretty spontaneous person, and I was curious too. I pulled in, and it was really hard to tell at first. Obviously, with it being late at night, the place would be closed anyway. The parking lot was completely empty, and the store was sort of by itself. There were no other stores connected to it, or in the same area or anything. I ended up driving up to a parking space and stopped. My girlfriend then opened up her door. She got out and I followed her. We walked right up to the front doors to look inside. When we got to the doors, we noticed the store was abandoned. It probably hadn't been opened in years. We looked around and were kind of exploring a little. Obviously, we couldn't go inside or anything though. We were going to head back to the car when we noticed this guy standing by it. I don't really know where he'd even come from. The man immediately turned and faced us, but did not say anything. I couldn't get a real good look at him, but I could tell he had a very long beard. The man then walked right over to our car and tried to open the driver's door, which was locked. I could not believe this guy's nerve, especially with us right there. I yelled at the man that that was my car. The man did not answer. Instead, he randomly turned and started running right towards us. It was one of the creepiest things I've ever seen. My girlfriend and I both took off running. We ended up sprinting around the side of the Toys R Us building. There was a quiet little road there, which led to the back. It connected to another parking lot. The man did not appear to chase us back there. We waited for a few minutes behind a dumpster and then returned to look at where he was. By now, the man was walking around the parking lot randomly, a fair distance away. My girlfriend and I decided to make a run for it. We thought we could make it to the car if he decided to chase us again, and he wasn't currently looking in our direction. We both took off running. About halfway into the sprint, the man noticed us and started to charge for us again. Fortunately, we were able to make it to the car first. We got in, locked the doors, and quickly drove away. The man was not able to catch up to us. We then continued our drive back home. I'm not sure who exactly that guy was or what he was doing. I would guess that he was probably on I haven't been back to that area ever since then.
I was enjoying a carnival in a neighboring city one summer night. It was only about a 20 minute drive away from my home and I figured that it was a good way to get out of the house and get some alone time away from my parents. While I was at the carnival, I didn't really do any rides. I only played a few games and was mostly just walking around trying food. I was also doing some people watching as I walked around the carnival. As I strolled past one of the game booths and food stands, I noticed a figure in the corner of my eye. A man, completely nondescript in appearance, seemed to be following me. I walked a little bit faster, going through different clusters of people, but each time I glanced backward, the man was still right there. He was even maintaining the exact same distance away from me. My heart started to race. I was trying to convince myself it was a coincidence that he was simply enjoying the carnival just like everyone else. Yet, it seemed like he was purposefully following me. Whenever I looked back at him, he would kind of look at me for a second. It was really weird. I wanted to somehow lose this guy. That's when I passed by the House of Mirrors. It seemed like the perfect place to do that, so I slipped inside, hoping the guy would not follow me. Of course he did. I quickly navigated through the House of Mirrors, trying to take the most effective and confusing routes possible. Just as I started to relax, thinking maybe I had lost the guy, I saw him again. His reflection appeared in one of the mirrors ahead, standing motionless. I started to panic as I sprinted through the maze, trying to find the exit. When I finally did, I ran out quickly. I glanced around frantically searching for any sign of the man, but there seemed to be no trace of him. I was shaken, but decided to leave the carnival. I walked toward the exit, keeping my head down and avoiding eye contact with anyone. The streets outside were much quieter, and the carnival sounds were fading away behind me. Finally, I thought I was safe, but as I turned a corner, there he was again. The same man was ahead of me, standing under a flickering streetlight. My heart was pounding in my chest. I started to run in an attempt to lose this man. It felt like hours that he had been following me. I was getting more and more creeped out. I had no idea what was going on. Why was he doing this to me? I was far away from where I'd parked my car. I was simply going down random streets, trying to escape this man. Most of the streets were empty now, and all of the stores were closed as well. I was all alone with him, and I could hear him chasing me. Eventually, I stumbled into an alley and pressed myself against the cold brick wall, trying to make myself invisible. I was hoping the man would go past and not notice me. Out of nowhere, headlights appeared at the end of the alley. A car turned in, and I waved my arms frantically, shouting for help. The driver slammed on the brakes, and the tires screeched. I blurted out that I was being chased, and asked if I could get a ride back to my vehicle. The middle-aged woman in the driver's seat could tell that I was really in trouble. She agreed to give me a ride back. As we drove away from the alley, I looked back one last time to the rear window. I saw the man standing at the mouth of the alleyway, watching us drive away. His expression was completely unreadable in the dim light, but I knew he'd been following me with ill intent. I never found out who he was or why he had chosen me to do this to that night. I ended up telling the police about it, and they did investigate, but unfortunately nothing ever came of it. I returned home really creeped out by the encounter. Since that night, I became much more cautious about going places on my own. I figured the guy most likely targeted me because I was obviously on my lonesome. This happened a couple of summers ago. I was out in the back doing some yard work. There had been some storms recently and I have a rather large property. I have an open area in the backyard, and there's also a woods that borders it. 
I was with my wife, and we were picking up all the tree branches and things that had been thrown about in the yard. We were bringing it to a pile just inside of the woods. After we were done doing this, I was going to mow the lawn. I remember that we were working for a while, when my wife suddenly came up to me and said that she'd seen someone off in the woods. Now, obviously, nobody was supposed to be inside the woods on our private property. I went over to where the woods started. It was the area where we'd been going to. When I looked, though, I didn't see anyone there. My wife came over to me and pointed out where she had seen the man. He seemed to be gone by now, though. I didn't know who it could have been. My wife told me that the man was just standing there, maybe 50 feet in. He saw her. Then she walked away. I guess he must have at the same time as well. I really had no explanation for her. All we could do was keep working. When we were just about done though, I saw the man myself. I was bringing some tree branches over when I saw the guy looking at me, standing a decent ways into the woods. It was just some guy wearing a t-shirt and jeans. I yelled at the man, asking him what he was doing on our property. The man then immediately moved away. I decided to go out there and confront him. I knew that might not be the best idea, but I did it anyways. I started walking into the woods. When I did, the man started moving away faster. He actually started to run, and I ran after him for a short time. I yelled at the guy not to come back. However, he was too quick and able to escape me. I didn't even really come close to catching up with him, and if I did, I don't really know what I would have done. I certainly wasn't going to tackle him or anything. I just wanted to talk to him and let him know not to come back to my property. After I felt like I'd chased him far enough away, I went back and rejoined my wife in the yard. I was able to mow the lawn now in peace. I thought that would be the end of the guy lurking about, but not quite so. The rest of the day was fine. I got the lawn mowed no problem, but after we had gone to bed, we were both woken up that night at around 1 a.m., I heard a loud knocking coming from the front door. We were both very confused. I got up and looked to see who was there. The knocking lasted for maybe 30 seconds. It continued even as I was walking toward the door. By the time I reached the front door, it had stopped though. I looked out and saw what appeared to be that same man running away. I didn't see him very well, and I didn't see him for very long before he went out of my sight. I was fairly certain it was the same guy though. After that, he did not come back. I still don't know what he was doing, and I don't know why he knocked on our door in the middle of the night. This is something that happened to me when I was much younger. I believe I was about 12 or 13 during this time. I lived at home with my older brother and my parents. One of my favorite things to do after school most days was to unwind by playing some video games. I would go upstairs to my bedroom and start playing on my PlayStation 2 for a while. Sometimes I would play all the way until it was time for dinner. One day I got home from school and went straight to my bedroom to play some video games. Both my parents were still at work and my brother was still at school. That's how things usually were for an hour or two after I got back on most days. I remember playing video games when, a little while in, I heard my brother getting home downstairs. The front door opened and closed, and I heard him walk inside. I didn't really think anything of it, and kept on gaming. About an hour later, though, I got a call from my mom. I had a home phone in my bedroom and saw through the caller ID that it was my mom's cell phone. When I answered, she told me that she was on her way to pick up my brother from his friend's house, and they would be home soon. My dad was going to pick up some food on the way home from work. She wanted to know what I wanted. I told her whatever food I was in the mood for that night, and then we said bye. I hung up, but it was only after ending the call that I realized how strange things were. If my brother was not home and he was at a friend's house, then who had I heard entering our house? My heart started racing 
and I got a terrible feeling. I carefully walked to my bedroom door and opened it up. I had never heard the person walking upstairs or near my bedroom, so I didn't know where they were after entering the house. After not hearing or seeing anything, I left my bedroom and quietly crept down the hallway. I looked downstairs. I still saw nothing. I went down the stairs and once there, I walked around the main level of our home, looking out for any suspicious signs. I still didn't see anybody. When I was nearing the kitchen and the front door though, I heard a strange noise coming from the basement. Clearly somebody was down there. I quickly ran away and went back upstairs to my bedroom. A short time after entering my room, I heard the front door to the house open and close again. At that point, I ran back downstairs. When I got to the front door, I saw a random man walking away down the street. I didn't recognize him at all. I only saw him for about two seconds, so I guess it might not have been the same guy who had just been in my house, but I was pretty certain it was. I then locked all the doors and called my parents, who then called the police. The door had been left unlocked for when my brother got home. I hadn't known he was going to a friend's house, so I had left it unlocked for quite a long period of time. Looking back, I can't believe that even happened. I didn't even know I was home alone with some random guy downstairs. I'm really glad that he didn't attempt to go anywhere near my bedroom. A few weeks ago, I was selling an old couch on Craigslist. I was not expecting much really. I just wanted to get rid of it because it was old and taking up a lot of space. I already had a much newer and nicer one. I live by myself in a two-bedroom house, about 20 minutes from a major city. The couch had to go, but first I wanted to see if I could get any money for it, instead of just giving it away for free. I listed the couch on Craigslist for $75, or the best someone could offer. It sat there for over a week with no action. Just one text asking about it, but that never materialized. I lowered the price to $50 for a few days, and still nothing. I was about to make it free when I received a text from somebody asking about it. I told them that it was still available. The person said they were willing to come by and buy it from me. I agreed. The person said her name was Gabby. After agreeing on the time, Gabby showed up the next day. She arrived at my house and I let her in. After seeing the couch, Gabby offered me $20 for it now. This was obviously less than what I was asking, but I was happy to just get anything at all for it. I accepted her offer and helped her load the couch out back onto her truck. We got it in okay, and after that she left. I was feeling good about getting rid of that old thing. Well, that night I was sleeping. When I suddenly woke up a little bit after midnight, there were these really loud banging noises. At first, I thought somebody was trying to break in. I instantly became completely awake. I heard that somebody was pounding loudly on my front door. It also sounded like somebody was pounding on a window as well. There were seemingly multiple people. Someone else may have been banging on a different window too. I was too scared to look though. I just grabbed my phone and called 911. I hid underneath my covers as the pounding noises continued for a good five minutes at least. They finally stopped and things became extremely quiet afterwards. I didn't know if the people had broken in or were still there or if they had left or what. I stayed there waiting for the police to arrive. Eventually, they did get there and looked around my property. However, whoever had been banging on my doors and windows had already left. I didn't know what they looked like or how many people it was either. I told the police what I could, but they couldn't do much other than tell me to call again if they returned. After that, thankfully, the people did not return. To this day, I don't know who it was or what they were doing, why they were banging all over my house. I personally think it had something to do with Gabby, who bought my couch. Now, obviously I could be wrong. I have no proof directly. 
I can't directly accuse her, but I've never experienced anything like that. And of course, it happened the very same day she came to my house. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Who knows? I'm just hoping that nothing like that ever happens again. I was at a bowling alley several months ago and had one of the craziest experiences of my life. I went there with three friends, so it was four of us in total. The place was somewhat busy, but nothing too crazy. I'm alright at bowling and I'm sort of particular about the bowling ball that I use. This was my first time at this particular bowling alley. I first used this one ball, but I didn't really like the feel of it. I went to one of the nearby racks that had a bunch of different ones. I found one that fit me really good. It was a green ball. I started using it, and it just felt so right. My friends and I continued bowling, and after our first game, we decided to do another one. This game was going really well for me. I was winning with one of my better scores of all time to that point. Right smack dab in the middle of the game, though... I remember this random man approached us. I had not seen him before and didn't know where he'd come from. The man was somewhat short and a little thin and had longer hair and a big thick mustache. After approaching, he told me I was using his ball. He then pointed to the green ball. He said he saw me using it and he needed to take it back right now. I asked him if he actually owned the ball. He said no but that he used it every time he came to this particular bowling alley. He claimed that he couldn't play without it. The man's overall way of talking and behavior came off as quite rude to me, at least in my opinion. I already had the ball, and why would I need to just give it up to him right in the middle of my game, just because he wanted that particular one? I said no, he could have it when I was done. The man then said that he needed it now, he charged right up to me. I stepped in front of him, and he actually pushed me. I was shocked. I watched the man grab the ball and walk away. I was so angry. I wanted so badly to grab him and punch him in his face in return. But obviously, I thought better of that. I did nothing and watched him go back to his lane, then start bowling with the ball. This guy was not like in some serious league or anything either. Just a random guy who appeared to be bowling with some friends like I was. I just went and grabbed another ball like a regular person. In between my bowls, I was kind of looking over at the man. I remember I noticed him just standing around between his turns. His whole friend group seemed to really be taking their time. I looked around at all the other racks of balls to find one I liked a bit more, but there were none. At one point, the man walked away from the lane, so when he did, I was kind of petty. I walked back over and grabbed the ball, then brought it back to my lane. I mean, the guy had taken it right in the middle of one of my best games. Out of nowhere, the man suddenly walked over again, grabbed the ball back, but instead of going back to his lane, I watched him walk right out the doors of the bowling alley. I had no idea what that was all about. I guessed he was stealing the thing. I ended up just getting another ball and finishing with that one. My great game was ruined. After that, we were done bowling. We went to leave. When I made it out to the parking lot, I noticed that my windshield was all cracked. I realized what had happened. The man had taken the bowling ball and smashed my windshield and all my windows with it. I called the police and reported it, as well as telling the bowling alley. After an investigation, security camera footage did in fact show the man breaking all my windows. I'm not sure how he knew exactly which car was mine, but somehow he did. And the man was later tracked down and apprehended, but this remains one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me over something so petty. This happened in 2014-2015. I, female, was about 20 years old. I'll give you some context before letting you know what happened. 
I was studying in a lovely seaside city in France, and everyone was cycling all the time. Cycling to school, cycling to work, cycling to the parties. It was a very safe place, full of tourists and students alike. I lived in this city and studied there between 2012 and 2015. Up until the events I'm going to mention now, I had never once felt unsafe, and I didn't hear anything from my friends either. In December of 2014, my boyfriend took me to his engineering school's Christmas party. We were a large group of friends and mingled quite a bit. One of the guys from the group, who I didn't know personally, left the party without anyone noticing. A month later, he was found dead in the harbor. The police never figured out what happened to him. I went online to check if there was any news, and it's still a cold case. I didn't know him, but I would think about it all the time. Was it because he was alone? Did he fall, or did someone push him? Why didn't anyone care enough to walk home with him? Needless to say, the city started to feel a lot less safe. At 20 years old, I didn't have the same understanding of such things as I do now as a 30-year-old, so my life carried on. A couple of months passed by, and it was the beginning of 2015. One of my friends was badly while cycling back home after a party. He was found in critical condition, his body laying halfway on the road and halfway on the sidewalk. His head had been smashed onto the sidewalk step. His jaw was completely shattered. He was a big guy in every sense possible. Not the sort of guy you could easily. When he was recovering in the hospital, he couldn't make sense of what happened. He had no idea why he'd been attacked on his bike. The police didn't find the suspect either. Two students, both my age, in the exact same friend circle, had been brutally assaulted for no reason. I still cycled everywhere because I had no other choice, but it began to make me quite nervous. I lived eight kilometers away from my school, and I didn't really have any other means of transportation. This meant I cycled approximately 16 to 20 kilometers every day. I'd been doing this ever since 2012. We were now in the spring of 2015. I was cycling back home from a party with my boyfriend. I had had a few drinks, but I was not drunk just yet. I was more tired. My boyfriend was annoying me because he was not waiting for me at all, and the distance between us kept getting bigger and bigger. All of a sudden, someone me out of nowhere. He appeared and kicked my bike to the floor. I'd been cycling so much. I was so used to the bike that I let it fall between my legs but did not fall myself. I resisted and stood up. I saw a man there. I reached for my bike which was on the floor. I tried to get a hold of the handlebars, but he kicked me, then kicked my hand. He started kicking again and again. I had already grabbed hold of the handlebars. I was really hurting, but I was trying to lift my bike. He was saying something, but I couldn't hear it. I saw my boyfriend looking back at me. He was a bit far away, but he'd stopped cycling now. I was sure he was going to help me, that the man would see I was not alone and stop me. I was still standing and trying to lift my bike. It had been maybe two or three seconds since the man started. My boyfriend just stood there looking at me, and then he turned his back and started pedaling away. My heart dropped immediately. It was the dead of night, and there was no one else around to help me. I was on my own now. The man kept kicking me. He wanted me to let go. He was kicking my hand so hard it was turning blue, but my grip was still strong. I thought about those other two students. I thought about how this may have been the very same guy. That gave me strength. I thought about my boyfriend and the sight of him leaving me and cycling away. It filled me with rage, and I used this rage. The man was holding some sort of glass in his hand, so I grabbed it with my free hand and smashed it into his face. I was furious. I got my bike up. Surely the glass must have had alcohol in it, because he began screaming that his eyes were burning. I smashed it into his face once more, and had a split second to launch myself and start pedaling away. He couldn't reach my hands anymore, so he kicked at the bike one more time. I managed to stay upright, 
He kept trying to chase me, but now I was faster. I pedaled until I could no longer breathe, until I felt numb. That night, I knew I had escaped something terrible. Due to the stress and suddenness of the I couldn't describe the man properly. I'll never know for sure if my experience was linked to the others. However, we were all walking and cycling on the same route. Even ten years later, I can still remember the look on my ex-boyfriend's face as he turned his back on me and left me to die. This happened several years ago. While it may not be as scary as some of the other stories you've heard, it was definitely one of the most terrifying and bizarre encounters I've ever had. I, 33 and male, live in the rural Midwest. I was born and raised in my hometown, and with the exception of a few months living with my father on the East Coast, I've lived here my entire life. I've become pretty acquainted with the majority of the back roads in my area. One such road is an old highway that no longer has the traffic of days prior, especially not after the construction of the interstate that runs through the town. It's a long and winding road that offers gorgeous scenic views during the day and a quiet escape from the city at night. Along this road is a small lot with no more than 10 parking spaces, two picnic tables, and a single trash can. It's easy to miss due to the heavily wooded area surrounding it and the majority of the rest of the drive to it. Due to its secluded nature, it played host to a fair share of teenage debauchery I myself spent many a Friday night smoking away with my friends there. Needless to say, there were a lot of good memories attached to this place, and over the years it's become one of my favorite spots to venture to when I need some peace or solidarity. One night, about five years ago, my girlfriend and I were going through a bit of a rough patch. We had a big fight due to having to work early in the morning, and her deciding to have a party full of her loud and intoxicated friends the very same night. Things escalated, and I stormed out of the house and started driving toward my favorite spot. As soon as I was out of city limits, I promptly cranked my angriest metal music and sped down the road, chain-smoking my menthols in an effort to calm down. Eventually, I turned off for the spot. I was happy to find no other cars in the lot, meaning I wouldn't awkwardly stumble upon two lovers engaging in unspoken acts. I immediately jumped out of the car and sat down on one of the picnic tables. I lit up a cigarette and stared up at the stars. I sat there for several minutes until I decided to head back to the warmth of my vehicle. I had heard some strange rustling coming from the woods. I didn't exactly want to become a chew toy for a coyote or an angry bobcat. I hustled back to my car and blared my music again, quickly forgetting about the sounds I'd just heard. I decided to have just one more smoke and make my way home. I smoked it and about halfway through, out of nowhere, I heard a pounding coming from my passenger side door. I looked over to see a large hand beating against the window. I turned down my music that was still blasting, and as I did, I could hear a very angry voice shouting, Open the f door! They began yanking and tugging on the door handles. Thankfully, the doors were locked. After a few moments, the man disappeared from the passenger side. He reappeared at the driver's side window, screaming and cursing at me to open the door right now. He began smashing my window with a rock trying to get in. I was frozen in a mix of confusion and fear, but eventually I snapped out of it and threw the car in reverse. It was so dark that I didn't really get a good look at the guy, except for a split second that he was illuminated by my headlights. He had a black zip-up hoodie, with the hood all the way up, a dark gray t-shirt and a ball cap covering his face. He was a stocky guy, and had to be well over six feet. The only distinguishing feature I could make out was his very large and dark protruding beard. I noped out of there real quick. I floored it across the parking lot and back toward the highway. That's when I heard it. A loud bang that sounded just like a shot. 
At the time, one of my best friends worked by a nearby gas station, so I made my way over to tell him the whole story. I looked over my car thoroughly and found a couple of dents on top of it and what looked like a boot print on my passenger door. We talked it over and ultimately decided not to call the police. It was a 20-minute drive to the location from the closest town. We were sure the guy would most likely be gone by the time anyone got all the way out there. And yes, I do realize this was probably ignorant of me in hindsight. I'm still baffled by this encounter. I don't know if the guy wanted to me, steal my car or worse, but I'm glad I made it home in one piece. I once had a pretty terrifying experience when I was out camping. I had gone out by myself, which was sort of my thing. I liked being out there all on my own, and away from people and society for a little while, just enjoying nature, really. For the most part, all of the times that I went out camping, I never had any unusual experiences at all. I never came across Bigfoot, or stumbled across a big scary animal or anything. This was in my late 20s. I always took about two weeks in the summer in order to spend some time out in the wilderness. About a week into my trip on this occasion, I had been out fishing when I noticed something unexpected. The pressure had dropped pretty strongly outside, and the wind had started blowing very hard. Soon after, I noticed in the distance, the dark and menacing black storm clouds were moving in. I certainly hadn't expected a storm during the time that I was out, and I usually never had them when I was camping. This one looked like it was going to be a real doozy as well. I stayed out for as long as I could, before I knew that I had to get back to my tent. I had some extra tent stakes that I brought along. I decided that I needed to reinforce it probably. I figured extra stakes would help hold it down if the winds got really bad. And from what I could see, the wind was going to be pretty fierce. I expected the storm to pass by quickly, since it had moved in fairly quickly as well. But boy, was I wrong. The storm continued fiercely through the rest of the day and well into the night. The strong winds ripped at my tent, and I often felt like it could be pulled out of the ground at any time. Fortunately, it stayed anchored. With the sounds of the storm outside, it would have been difficult to hear anything else that was going on out there. Of course, I also wasn't expecting to need to hear anything else. I was really surprised at one point then, when there was a very bright strike of lightning outside. It brightened up the entire night for a brief moment, and during that brief period, I saw the outline of someone outside through the fabric of my tent. It was just for a split second, but I knew I had seen it. It was very clearly a person, as far as I could tell, but I had no idea why a person would be out there in this weather. The storm had been going on for hours already. I couldn't imagine the stress one would have to be under in order to be out in the storm without having found shelter yet. On top of all those thoughts, I also began to feel a little bit scared. I didn't have a lantern on at the time, and I didn't want to turn it on after seeing that shadow. If I was right, and someone was out there right now, I didn't want to call attention to myself. Instead, I kept quiet. Not that it really mattered since the storm was so loud outside, and tried not to move at all. Hopefully, if there was someone out there and I hadn't been seeing things, they would simply move on and that would be that. I waited and kept watching as the storm raged on. I felt like a kid in a horror movie, hiding in the closet waiting for the killer to move on. Yeah, that's a bit extreme, as I had no idea what the person outside would have wanted, but I was too scared to try and have it make sense in my head. While I was sitting there, I heard a noise. It sounded like someone attempting to open my tent's entrance. Fortunately, it could not be opened from the outside if I had closed it on the inside. Despite this, I reached out into my bag and grabbed my g I had never actually had to use it before, but I'd always brought it with me in case something bad happened. 
After a moment, the noise stopped. I relaxed for a second, but that didn't last long. I heard a loud puncturing sound and saw a knife tip coming through the front of the tent. I panicked. There was no doubt someone was trying to get in. I took hold of my and fired it, although not directly at the entrance. I wanted to scare whoever it was away. The knife quickly withdrew after the shot. However, there was too much going on outside with the storm for me to know if the person with the knife had truly left or not. All I could do was sit in the middle of my tent away from the sides and wait to see what happened next. I couldn't hear or see anything, and it was the most terrifying night of my life up to that point. I didn't sleep at all. When the storm finally left and the sun came up, I was able to tell that whoever was outside my tent was long gone. I had to get some sleep after that and fell asleep quickly. I woke up completely on edge, worried that the man might come back at any time. My family was pretty poor growing up. We had to move a lot, actually, as it was sometimes hard to pay rent, and our parents had to find new places to live. I can't even remember exactly how many times we had to find a new home. One thing that was true, though, was that all of the houses we ended up renting were rural homes. We never lived in town, not even once. Although she's in her late 80s, my mom is still alive, and she's never lived in town even once in her entire lifetime. When I was 12 years old, I remember one instance where my sister and I were home alone in the house that we lived in, out in the holler. My parents and other siblings had gone to visit my grandparents for the weekend. We didn't go because we both had too much schoolwork to do. Plus, we really wanted to stay home anyway. She was only a year older than me, but by that time, the two of us really wanted time away from our parents whenever we could get it. On Saturday night, a pretty violent storm came upon us. We were both slightly scared of thunderstorms at the time, but that didn't keep us from having fun. We, of course, decided to tell each other little scary stories in the dark while the storm was going on outside. When you live out in the country like we did, it's easy to come up with scary stories because there were a lot of them about people and things that lived in the hills and woods. I ended up telling one story that I had heard from the other boys at school about some sort of dog boy or something that lived out in the hollers. I don't remember all of the exact details in the story, but I do know that it scared me, and it sure as scared my sister when I told her. It was that story that stuck with me the most, because during the telling of that story, we lost electricity in the house. I remember it well, because there was a huge lightning bolt followed quickly by deafening thunder. Then the entire house went dark. I went over to search for some candles in the different rooms of our home. At one point, I suddenly heard my sister scream. She was in my parents' room, and I was in the kitchen. We both ran toward the other and met up in the living room. She was completely terrified. My sister told me that while in my parents' room, she'd caught someone watching her through the bedroom window. She had been looking at it when another bolt of lightning flashed in the sky and for a brief moment saw some freaky-looking guy watching her from outside our home. I told her she was probably just seeing things. I mean, we had been telling each other scary stories all night long, and it made sense that we would be a little freaked out because of it but she swore up and down that she had really seen someone out there. I tried to convince her that even if someone had been outside the house, there was nothing to worry about. Dad was always right beside the door, and although we were forbidden to ever touch it, if someone tried to break into the house or hurt us, I was sure he would overlook us using it that one time. It was right then that a frantic knocking came at the front door of our home. We both nearly jumped out of our skin. My sister screamed again and started repeating it's him over and over. Even though I was younger, I told her I would go check the door. I went over and picked up the rifle. Cautiously, I went over to the door, unlocked it, slowly opened it, 
and took aim and looked outside. I didn't see anyone on the porch or in the yard. There was just no one there. I closed the door. No sooner than I had locked it, I began hearing a knocking on the back door of our home. By this point, we were both freaking out. I didn't want to go and answer the back door too, and she didn't want me to either. Instead, we both went over to the living room sofa, taking our weapon with us. We spent the rest of the night on that sofa, waiting for something to happen, but the knocks on the back door of the house were the last we heard. The only other sounds we heard that night were of the storm raging on outside. We really had no idea what went on that night. It was weird and eerie. We had both heard both knockings, and although I hadn't seen anyone myself, I never doubted my sister did. We never knew who, or most importantly, why someone had come knocking on our door that night in the middle of the storm. All I can think of concerning a scary story that happened to me when I was younger is a weird story. This happened back when I was 13 years old. I wasn't very popular when I was in middle school, but it didn't bother me much. I lived out in a rural home and was the only child who spent a lot of time by myself anyway. Being alone was normal for me, and I never really felt much of a need to have many friends. I was doing some volunteer work for an older lady who lived out in the general area that I lived in. Her husband had passed away not long ago, unfortunately, after they'd been together for over 60 years. She wasn't able to do a lot of stuff on her own at her age, so I'd go over to her house a few times a week and help her out. On this day, I had gone over early in the morning and done some chores for her that lasted until late afternoon. I could have called my parents for a ride when I got done helping out, but I didn't. It was a very long walk along the dirt road from her house to mine, but nothing I hadn't done many times before. On this day, though, there had been a storm brewing for about an hour before I decided to head on home. It hadn't felt like rain yet, so I thought that although the walk was long, I would still be able to make it. Plus, there was something I liked about walking out in the country when the sky was black with dark clouds and rumbling with thunder. Maybe about a third of the way home, the wind began blowing a lot harder, and that made it quite difficult to walk since it was blowing right against me. I felt a few drops of rain hitting me, but still held out hope I wouldn't be caught in the downpour. My hopes did not last very long, though. Even as I hurried to try and futilely make it home before the rain, it began pouring before long. Even though it was a very warm summer day, for some reason the rain was especially cold and it soaked me to the bone within only a few moments. At that point, I was so wet I didn't even care anymore. I didn't even avoid walking in mud puddles. It was when I was walking by this field that the strange thing happened. Looking out in the field, I could see someone standing out there. He was a bit far away from me, so I couldn't make out a lot of details about him, but he seemed to be dancing in the rain. It was such a weird thing to see, but I guess maybe he was some sort of nature lover or something. He seemed like he was having a good time dancing around in that field. I kept watching this guy as I walked along. After a bit of time, it looked like he suddenly noticed me. After looking at me for a moment, he started walking in my direction. I just tried to keep walking and not pay too much attention to him, but it was hard not to. He was a good distance away, but after walking for a few moments, he suddenly began running in my direction. He kept adjusting his run path too, so he was always coming straight at me. Now, here's the point in the story where some people actually begin to doubt its authenticity, but I swear to you that this actually happened. Once the guy got real close, he got down on all fours in the mud and dirt and started barking and growling at me as if he was a dog. He then still came at me, baring his teeth and attempting to bite me. I think this would have caught anyone off guard, but for me it was utterly terrifying to experience. I really had the impression that whoever this guy was, he was nuts and I needed to get away from him as quickly as I could. I began running away from him. A couple of looks back showed that he stayed on all fours and still chased after me. 
Of course, there was no way he could keep up with me this way, and eventually he seemed to give up. That didn't stop me from running, until I knew I was far enough away from this nutter to be safe again. I could still hear him barking in the distance the whole time. By the time I got home, I was wet and covered in mud, but I felt safe after getting there. My parents thought it was just a guy fooling around, trying to play a prank on or just scare me. If so, that means he definitely accomplished his goal. I was convinced there was something really wrong with this guy though, and I'm glad he wasn't able to catch me. I grew up on a really small family farm. The farm was tended by the whole family. Plus, we had one farmhand who lived and worked for us for a really long time. His name was Rod, and he'd worked for my family from before I was even born. He was practically a member of our family, and most of the time he even had meals with us. Rod had been around us for so long that I couldn't even imagine what life would have been like if he wasn't around. My bedroom was on the second floor of the farmhouse and was at the back of the house. I was able to look out and see the cornfield behind it at all times. It was actually pretty beautiful to look out at at times, all during the years. One of the most common sights was to look out and see Rod out there, working on a scarecrow or doing something else. The desk that I used to do homework on was right in front of that window, so I spent a lot of time looking out of it. Although we helped out on the farm, our parents were always strict about our schoolwork coming first. I enjoyed working on the farm, though, and on this day, I was helping Rod out with some of the farm work. It was a pretty windy day, and according to the weather report, we were going to get hit by some pretty fierce storms. Rod and I had to get the farm ready for that. However, as the first drops of rain began to fall from the sky... He insisted I get back to the house and get started on my homework instead. So, that's what I did. I barely made it into the house before the storm arrived. It was pretty dark outside by that point, with the sky overcast from storm clouds. Even though it was only the middle of the day, by the time I went to my bedroom, it was so dark out that I needed my desk lamp on in order to see... Fortunately, even though I had a ton of homework to do, I really liked thunderstorms. I was able to sit at my desk, work, and watch the storm rage outside. At one point, some movement must have caught my eye though. Something caused me to look up and out at the cornfield, and when I did, I saw the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. One of the scarecrows appeared to jump down off his setting and out into the corn. I had to do a double take but it didn't change the fact that I had seen what I'd just seen. I didn't know what to think of it, but I knew I needed to tell Rod what I just saw. I found him in the kitchen having some coffee, and he thought I must have been seeing things. When he looked out the window, though, he too saw the scarecrow was gone. And although it was storming pretty hard, he put on a coat and went out to check. I think he did it more or less because he could tell I was scared by what I'd seen. There was definitely no need to try and get the scarecrow back up during the storm. When he eventually came back, Rod looked just as rattled as I felt. He hadn't put the scarecrow back up, because when he got out there, he told me there was nothing. There was no trace of the scarecrow at all. We were both pretty disturbed by this, and spent the rest of the day freaking out. When we told my dad what happened, he felt the scarecrow was probably just not well secured enough and must have fallen off and blown away in the storm. I don't know how likely that was, but it was the explanation he accepted. However, my dad hadn't been there sitting at my desk when I watched it jump off its perch and walk away. Maybe if he had, he would have been just as scared as I was. I had bought my first house in my early 20s and lived all alone. I was content and at peace living alone and decided to buy a house out in the country as opposed to an urban setting like my apartment had been located in. I had a few neighbors but most of them kept to themselves and I did too. The house was a ranch style home which meant there was no second floor 
only a basement and first floor. The master bedroom was on the back side of the house, looking straight into the small backyard. Then there was nothing but woods beyond that. Since the basement was underground, the outside entry door had what was referred to as a bilco door, which is composed of two steel doors that swing out to each side, then a set of steps taking you down to a standard-sized entry door into the basement of the home. I normally don't keep those Bilco exterior doors locked, especially in the summertime, just in case I need to get into the basement from the backyard. During the winter, though, I don't really need to get in or out of the basement, so I lock those doors up, sometimes even in the fall as well. The first two years there were quiet, peaceful, and enjoyable. I could walk out my back door and go hunting in the woods just behind my house. I would get up in the mornings on days off and just open my garage door from sunrise to sunset with no issues at all. No one was coming around uninvited or anything. I worked a rotating 12-hour day-slash-night shift schedule, which was brutal to get used to. I often had a lot of trouble switching from night shift to day shift, either sleeping too much or not enough. The work schedule repeated itself in a pattern, though, so it was nice to at least plan days off in advance. One particular night in December, I had just finished my three work days of night shift. It was hard trying to fall asleep at night on that first night off, but it was essential to get my body back to sleeping at night again, to change back to the day shift work schedule, which I needed for the following three days. This first transition night, I would typically sleep very lightly. It had been snowing outside since dark, which was around 5 p.m. or so. There were a few inches already on the ground by the time I'd went to bed. That was around 11 p.m., I fell asleep within the hour. I woke up at around 3 o'clock. The house was dead silent. I laid there in the complete darkness, hoping I would just drift right back to sleep soon. But after 2-3 to three minutes, I heard a violent banging right outside my bedroom window. I recognized that sound. Someone was trying to open the locked basement Bilco doors. I jumped out of bed and ran down the long hallway to the opposite end of the house, where the rear sliding glass door was. The outside floodlight switched on. I switched on the actual lights as well and looked out the sliding glass door toward the basement doors. There wasn't anybody there. I looked a bit closer. I could see fresh footprint tracks in the snow coming from the small path in the woods leading right up to the basement doors. There was no snow on the handle either, indicating someone had just tried to open them. I saw a second set of footprints leading away from the basement doors with a rooster tail, indicating someone had run as fast as they could away from my house. I stayed awake until almost dawn, leaving the lights turned on to the back side of the home. I decided to follow those tracks into the woods at daybreak, but the newly fallen snow and blowing wind had covered them up completely. After I made it a few feet into the woods, I concluded that whoever was trying to break in had probably heard me waking up and moving down the hallway inside the house. They'd run off into the woods before I was able to get to the sliding glass door and turn on the lights. I decided not to call the police since nothing was damaged or stolen. From that day on, though, I made sure to keep all the doors locked and no longer left the garage door open all day. After all, nobody else was supposed to be around this area at that time. Yet there they were nonetheless. I later sold the house without any further incidents occurring since that one particular event. When I was 16, I lived with my parents in a normal home in the suburbs. My parents were the type to take a lot of trips, both for work and for leisure. They would do so all throughout the year, 
so when they would go during the school year, I'd stay home and watch the house, anywhere from a couple of days to an entire week. I didn't really mind, and sometimes I even enjoyed it. During this week, my parents were both away for six days, so pretty much every night I'd go out and get food from somewhere. It was on the second night alone that I played video games on the computer for nearly four hours straight. It was a Friday, so I was staying up late. I didn't have any homework to do, but around 8.15 I realized I hadn't eaten anything yet. I took a break and got in my car, driving to a sandwich shop nearby. It was close to closing time, so I wasn't expecting a line or anything. When I walked in there, there was a single man standing at the counter. He looked like he'd just ordered and was waiting for his food to be delivered. I stepped around him, and an employee took my order. Then I stood behind the man and waited as well. While I was standing there, I noticed how rugged the man looked. He was tall and skinny, wearing beat-up clothes and having long, thinning hair. He got his order and left but I couldn't help but watch him leave, intrigued by his unusual appearance. A couple minutes later, I got my own food. I went out to my car and hopped in, leaving the parking lot. It wasn't very busy out, so I got home very quickly. I went to my room and sat down at my desk. I turned on a video to watch while I ate. It was 9pm by then, but I wasn't that tired yet. I was planning on staying up another few hours at least. As I sat there though, I heard a quick and subtle sound from downstairs. I paused the video and listened in, but I didn't hear anything more. I stood up and leaned my head out into the hallway, listening again. I was still not hearing anything. By this point, I had no idea what that sound was. I wasn't paying attention enough and it was so quick that I couldn't even really tell where in the house it had come from. Although I was thinking it was probably nothing, I still wanted to check to be sure. I walked downstairs and looked around. There wasn't much to be seen. Everything seemed just how it had been left. As I walked past the front door though, I realized what the sound was. I grabbed the door handle and shook it, recreating the exact sound I'd just heard someone was trying to get in. I quickly looked out the peephole, not seeing anything. I ran around the back door and scanned the backyard until my eyes fell upon a figure. They were facing away from the house, standing at the door to the shed. They were tall and thin. After a few moments, I recognized them. I was positive it was the man I'd seen earlier that night at the sandwich shop. A moment later, he forced the shed doors open and stepped inside. I took this as my chance to call the police. I ran up to my room and dialed 911. I watched the shed from my room window. The operator said officers were en route, but less than a minute later, the man ran out of the shed holding several large tools. He hurried toward the home, heading straight for my back door. I ran out into the hallway to see if I could do anything to stop him, or maybe even flee from the house. I was stopped in my tracks by the piercing thud of metal slamming against the back door. My adrenaline spiked, and in those few moments, I made the decision to run for it. I sprinted down the stairs and straight for the front door. I could see the man continuing to break down the back door. I ran into my front yard and out onto the street, running to the corner of the block. A few minutes passed by before two police cars pulled into the driveway and went in through the open front door. I made my way back to the house, getting there just as they pulled the man out and put him into their police car. They'd found him holding a heavy pipe wrench that he'd gotten from my parents' shed. He'd broken into the house while I was outside. It looked like the man had gone on an absolute rampage, destroying everything he could in the few minutes it took for the cops to arrive. Why he followed me home and did what he did is unknown, but the man clearly did not seem very mentally stable. If I had chosen to stay inside, 
there's no doubt that man would have broken into my room before the cops would have made it. I don't think anyone can know for sure what he would have done to me. It was January, and I was renting out a winter cabin that was by an ice fishing lake. It was a very small, bare bones cabin, with only the essentials. It was only there for people like me, who liked going out on the lake for fishing, or ice fishing. I'd usually bring a friend along with me, but sometimes I also went all by myself. I'd never had any issues with doing that. I had planned out three days there with no other real plans in mind, except sitting out by the lake and doing some fishing. And the first day in the cabin and made myself at home, brewing some hot coffee and relaxing by the fireplace for most of the afternoon. This cabin was only a single room, so the bed, fireplace, and everything else was all in one area. Anyway, I fell asleep quite early and woke up at around 7 a.m. I wanted to head out to the lake in the morning. It was about a 10-minute walk from the cabin, down a short forested path that was entirely covered in snow. Once I reached the lake area, I found a good spot and got my things situated. I drilled into the ice and started my fishing. I find it to be really stress-relieving, to just sit there and fish all day. I know a lot of other people find it to be boring, though. I stayed on the lake for several hours, probably at least four, then packed up my things. The snow was really starting to pick up, and the wind was getting heavier and heavier. I walked off the lake and back onto the path. Immediately, I noticed something curious, a set of footprints in the snow, going alongside mine from earlier. They went right up to the edge of the lake I was at, then turned around and went back down the path toward the cabin. I was feeling a little uneasy suddenly. Someone was out there and had been right behind me, maybe watching me. I chose to follow those prints and see where they led to. They mostly went along with the path, going right back to the cabin. Instead of going up to it though, they suddenly veered off into the woods. As far as I could see, they continued in a perfectly straight line, going through the trees. I was even more confused, and slightly nervous now. I went back inside the cabin, and warmed up by the fireplace. There was nothing else out here for miles from what I was aware of, so anyone being out here was just odd, especially when it was snowing so heavily in the winter. I made food and stayed in the cabin for the rest of the night, keeping the fireplace running. I was mostly just doing some reading. About an hour after sunset, I heard movement outside, a very light crunching in the snow, but in the I moved over to the window and looked. Instantly, I saw a figure out by the trees, walking toward the path. They were wearing this thick black clothing, covering every part of them. It made it hard to get any details about what they looked like. Once they got onto the path, they turned and started coming right for the cabin. I ducked my head down now, just listening to the footsteps getting closer and closer until they were right up to the wall. The footsteps moved to the side, coming right up to the window I was hiding under. Their shadow moved around like they were peering inside the cabin. Then they stopped all of a sudden. I tilted my head to look up and see what was going on, only to find their eyes staring right back at me. I jumped away, now standing a few feet away from the window. The person tried to lift it open. I ran and grabbed a nearby knife. Still, they tried to open the window. After a few failed attempts though, the person ran off. I watched their figure disappear into the snowy woods, going in the same direction I'd seen them come from earlier. After that, I packed up and ran to my car, leaving the area only a few minutes later. I don't know who they were or what they wanted, but they knew I was staying there after seeing me at the lake 
and willingly came back in the middle of the night to try and break in through the window. They definitely had something horrible in mind for me. Luckily, I got out unharmed, but I have a feeling that night was close to being my last. This happened in January of 2020, when I was 18. Over winter break, I had signed up for DoorDash, since a couple of my friends were also doing it. I didn't really need the money, as I was in high school and still living with my parents, but it was more to just have something to do. As a kid, a couple hundred bucks a week was pretty damn nice. The first few nights went smoothly. I got the hang of it after the first three or four orders, and after that it was all just the same sort of work cycle. During my second week, I started working more, getting excited about making money for the first time. I tried to make as much as I could. My friends were doing the same. They had mentioned that on days with bad weather, you'd usually make even more. On the one night when the snow started coming down, I chose to hit the road and do some deliveries. For the first hour, I was FaceTiming one of my friends as we were both driving around. He stopped and went home around 8 though. It was a Saturday, so I could stay out as late as I wanted. By 10 o'clock, I was getting a little bored. I took up one more order, I got the bag and drove to the neighborhood. This was just some regular street with very average houses. By now, the snow had covered up everything though, which made it both hard to drive and hard to see the numbers on the buildings. I slowly made my way down the street until finally finding the right address. It was a two-story, very typical-looking suburban home. It even still had Christmas lights hanging on the trees outside. I parked and put my hazards on, then got out. I double-checked the bag had everything and walked up the driveway. As I approached the front porch, though, I saw the front door was open. Not all the way, but just enough for it to be considered strange, considering it was snowing and so cold. I figured it was so I could leave the bag inside the house, rather than out in the snow. When I got up to the door, I pushed it a little bit more open and slid the bag inside. Just as I pulled my phone out to take a picture for confirmation, I heard a woman's voice yell from across the house. She asked if I was the delivery person dropping off her order. It sounded like a young woman, maybe even in her early 20s. Uh, yeah, I put it right here in your doorway. I was not expecting any conversation. The woman responded right away. She asked if I could push the door open and bring the bag inside to her. I knew it was strange to be asking me to go in their house, but I pushed the door open just to see where they were. Past the entrance, there was this long hallway that led to what I assumed to be the kitchen. On the wall, I could see the clear shadow of the woman, who was presumably standing around the end of the corner. Uh, where do you want me to bring it? There was a long moment before the woman responded. She leaned half of her body around the corner and showed herself at the end of the hallway. She urged me to bring it on over to her and gestured with her hands for me to come inside. Then she slipped back around the corner and out of sight. I realized that the shadow outline on the wall had not moved with her. It was someone else's shadow, standing somewhere by her around the corner. I stood there for a second as I felt bell had rush through my body. I quietly placed the bag down and took a few steps back before turning and rushing away from the house. I stumbled into my car and glanced back at the home. As I pulled away, in the front window, the figure of a large man approached and watched my car as I left. I stopped at a nearby gas station to catch my breath and rethink everything that just happened. It was pretty clear by how everything played out that this was some kind of a trap. I also knew the police would have nothing but my word to go off of. I did end up reporting it, but when they went to the house to ask the woman about what happened, she denied that anyone else was there. 
they denied the officers access to search the home for anyone else too. Like I said, the police were unable to do anything at the time. What the woman and the man were trying to do by getting me inside their house is unknown. I can only imagine they would have robbed me at the least, and at the worst, I wouldn't be here right now. I've been a police officer for my county for almost a decade now. I've seen some crazy and disturbing things, sometimes making me question why I even chose this career path. What happened on this night, though, still sticks with me and is often the event that I think about the most. It was nearing the end of winter, but where I'm located, it always stays cold until about mid-spring. This night, I was set to be on patrol of the major highway for most of my shift. On a typical night, I would stop maybe two or three cars for speeding. Otherwise, not much would happen. Sometimes a call for backup would come in, but usually I was driving along the highway, doing the usual circle. That was when I passed a car on the side of the road that hadn't been there before. It's of the highway. I didn't see it until I was already passing by. circle, taking about 15 minutes before I got back to where I'd seen it. Broken down vehicle. Maybe I just hadn't noticed it before. I wasn't in a rush. I pulled in behind it, parking about 15 feet away, and leaving my headlights on. I called in to report that I was investigating a presumably empty vehicle on the side of the southbound highway. I got out with my flashlight and walked up to the car. My first impression was of how old it looked. It looked like something from the 80s and was rusted all over, dents and scratches throughout. I walked up to the driver's side window and held my flashlight up. Nobody seemed to be inside. As I glanced around, I happened to notice some worrying signs, though. There was a pile of clothes in the back seat that looked like they belonged to a young woman. The way they were scattered around, though, didn't look right. I moved over to the other side of the vehicle, but a faint sound from behind me caught my attention. I quickly turned and pointed my flashlight into the woods surrounding the highway. Immediately, the sound stopped, but I'd heard enough to know it was footsteps. Someone was walking out there watching me. I yelled out, directing them to move into the light with their hands raised. A moment passed by and I called out again. There was no response. Everything was silent. I felt my heart beating in my chest as I called in to update on the situation and get some backup to come. I stood there staring into the woods. If something had happened in this car, there would be reason for whoever was out there to try and stop me from finding out. I drew my firearm and moved further behind the car, keeping an eye on that tree line. The next five minutes were brutally nerve-wracking. Finally, another officer pulled onto the scene. Right away, I heard footsteps sprinting into the woods. We immediately got to searching the rest of the vehicle. It was clear that something bad had gone down here. But searching the woods in the middle of the night with someone likely dangerous out there was not a safe option. Along with indicators of violence, we found an empty ammo package. It was likely they had a firearm on them. Knowing someone was out there watching me the whole time, maybe even having me in the sights of their weapon, was one of the most unnerving things to even think about. The following day, we were able to get some more information and run a more thorough investigation. The car was untraceable. Although some shoe prints were found in the woods, they faded out pretty quickly, without any direction. What really happened in that car that night still remains an open case. The clothes were suspected to belong to a woman who was reported missing. But with no leads on who that suspect was, it's just left me unable to stop thinking about it.
I'm a 24-year-old male, and a few years ago I picked up a job at a local grocery store. I was doing community college and just wanted some money to help pay for food and going out with friends. After a couple of months of working there, I started to get used to the regular customers that came in. Most of them were nice and otherwise average people, but this one guy always had something weird about him. He came in most nights around 9pm, which was an hour before closing. He would walk around the store for a long time, before eventually returning with one or two items and checking out. For how long he would spend walking around every night, it was really weird that he'd always only end up with a couple of things. He didn't ever talk much, but I assumed he was living on the streets or out of his car. That would explain why he only ever got a few things, and his clothes were never clean. He just kind of looked unkempt all around. Anyway, this went on for several weeks, if not months, on end. I never thought too much of it after a while, because it was such a normal part of work now. One night, he came in as usual, but instead of walking around the store, he came right up to the register. I asked if he needed help with anything. The man just kind of looked at me for a second before asking if I drove an old Toyota that was out in the parking lot. I immediately found it a bit weird that he would know that, but I said yes because I didn't see where this was going. I thought maybe there was something wrong with my car. Instead, the man kept a straight face and walked away immediately. Obviously, this was really weird. I asked my coworker to watch over the registers for a moment. I went out to the front of the store and looked out into the parking lot. My car was right where I'd parked it and didn't seem to have anything wrong with it. I went back inside to the register, thinking I would ask the man when he came to check out, but he never did that night. I don't know when he left, but the store closed without him ever coming like he usually would. When I left, I checked all around my car and nothing seemed off about it. It left me totally confused as to what that was all about. The next day, I planned to ask the man again, but he didn't come in for the whole next month. The man never showed up again. I was just left to wonder why he'd asked about my car seemingly out of nowhere and for no reason. On a Saturday night, I clocked out of work as usual. This was the one night of the week where I'd be the only cashier, so at the end of the night I was always left by myself. When I began walking through the parking lot toward my car, I got this real strange feeling in my gut. I just remember something feeling wrong. Maybe there really was some intuition about something. It was really unnerving me. I walked quickly and got in my car glancing around the lot. It was pretty much empty and had nothing to give me reason to believe that something was wrong at all. I turned my car on and just before I put it in drive, I heard the slightest sound from right behind me. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move in the mirror that was facing my back seat. I left the car running as I sprinted out and stood a few spaces away, looking at my window to the back seat. I could see a figure moving around. I turned and ran for the store, going back in and calling the police. By the time they arrived, my car was empty. There was no signs of forced entry either, so they had to have some illegal key copy or something. Or I'd have to have left the doors unlocked by accident. I'm fairly certain it was the strange man from weeks ago. But I didn't know why if it was him though. Maybe he had been trying to get in there for the entire month I hadn't seen him and was waiting for me to forget to lock the doors. I think that I locked them that night, but every once in a while I do forget without even knowing, so I can't write that off completely. The man that was back there clearly wasn't just trying to rob the vehicle. He even tried to stay hidden after I'd gotten in and turned it on. It's horrifying knowing that I was so close to having left that parking lot and drove away unknowingly with the person in the back seat. Once we'd left, who knows what would have happened. They might have waited until I pulled into my house, or I may have never even gotten home that night.
What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you have any feedback for me as well, be sure to leave that in comments below the video. If you guys have a story you'd like to send in, or if you'd like to contact me for any reasons, there will be links to my social media in the description below the video, including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is if it has one, what type of story it is if it has one, and how you'd like to be credited in the description below the video. Please make sure to include as much detail as you feel comfortable with and try to use as much proper grammar as possible to make sure you have the highest chance of appearing in a future video. Overall, I think that's pretty much it for now guys, so thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.